back now to introduce the stage Andy Minut. Uh, Andy is the lead colorist at 1000 Volt, currently based in Istanbul. He is an award-winning colorist for feature films and commercials. His credits include Big Game, Vi 3D, Forbidden Empire, which was the number one box office in Russia for 2014, Red Bull F1 Dolby Atmos trailer, Ruby Red, and several car commercials for Audi, to name but a few. So, Andy, thank you. Thanks, Julian, and also thanks to IBC and the Academy for having me today. I'm really excited to talk to you a little bit about the benefits for colorists, I called my little presentation here. So let's get started. Um, here I have a scheme uh, of the ACES framework or the ACES system uh, um, and the part that affects um, us as a colorist uh, uh, mainly. So as you probably might know, on the left side you see that the source footage um, today nowadays uh, pro um, mostly from digital cameras gets converted to the common ACES color space via the input device transforms. And this ACES color space, as also mentioned before, is a high dynamic range and wide gamut color space, which means that these transforms can be without a loss of image quality. They can be done, and so all the footage um, gets converted to one or conformed to one unified color space. Then the graded images, the graded ACES images, get uh, con transformed on the output side um, and tone mapped to the dynamic range and the characteristics of the um, output display, let's say a projector calibrated to DCI-P3, or a video display um, calibrated to REC-8086, um, for example. And here on the bottom I added something um, for future color spaces that are uh, in progress or uh, some of them already done. So that's what's happening. What does this mean for me um, as a colorist? So um, in my, my philosophy is that if a machine can something do better than a human being, so for example me uh, as a colorist, then I think the machine should do the job. And one big example of this is uh, the matching of different camera color spaces. So this for me is just a technical process uh, to get those uh, different cameras to match. And I think my job is to apply the creative look um, and ACES helps a lot on, uh, on this side. And on the other side, uh, we have the output um, with the um, um, tone mapping from high dynamic range to the dyna lower dynamic range nowadays uh, of the displays. And this also happens in a very pleasing and from my aesthetic point of view, um, very nice way. So there it also helps a lot. And uh, with this tone mapping happening on the output side, this means that when I open a project and I use the ACES system, the images look right when I start. So they look roughly like they looked on the set, and you don't have a really washed out or desaturated image um, where you then first start to apply all your curves and stuff to get the images look right and then uh, work further for the creative look. So uh, from my point of view, it's a really optimal starting point for the color grading. So let's have a look at an example. It's uh, from the big game movie um, that's currently, I think, on video on demand. This is the uh, Alexa Log C uh, color space, and now we're viewing at it, uh, viewing it the wrong way, let's say here in sRGB. And that's why it does not look right. It looks, uh, uh, it lacks contrast, it, it's, it is desaturated, so that's not how usually we want to um, have the film to look. So, and this is the ACES base setup, so that's my, that was my starting point for the color grading on this one. And as you um, might see, the difference yeah, um, is quite big. And on this image, I think, yeah, the contrast is really nice. Uh, all the light levels are at the points where they should be. There is, yeah, there's a slightly greenish uh, tint to this uh, image because um, of the ND filter in front of the camera lens. And I will show you the final grading that looks just like this. So the step from here to here is not that big. And so it was on this shot not a really big amount of work to do for me, I have to admit. But to be honest with you, it's not always like this. So here's another example. And this is already the ACES base setup, so not the log image. Here we see this scene um, still lacks lots of contrast and clarity and all the stuff, and there I had to do a little bit more because of the bright objects. The, this, these were anamorphic lenses, they flared a little bit in the, into the frame, and the final grading then looks like this, so there, a little bit more work had to be done with some shapes and keys and adding clarity and so on. 
Another point I want to talk to you about is the versality of the looks. So, um, as uh, Andy previously mentioned, uh, ACES is not a specific look, but I also heard this from um, or read it about it from some people saying everything will, if I use ACES, everything will look the same, everything will have this ACES look. From my experience, that's not true. So, I, I'm using ACES not only for the feature films, so, but for almost all of my commercials I'm currently doing at a thousand volt. And um, yeah, from my point of view, um, extreme looks are possible, really saturated bright colors. If you look on the right at the middle picture, the, this really bright saturate, saturated red wouldn't have been possible with the film print emulation, for example. And with ACES, it was easy, easily doable. And yeah, ACES is open to all kinds of looks. And I will just give you a few more examples. Uh, quickly going through it. So this is a feature film, and this uh, is again of the um, frame of the big game feature film. But um, yeah, I think maybe more interesting are some examples for commercials. So this is something more um, on the cold uh, cyanish side, something with a more retro kind of look, high contrast, something really soft. Here, uh, something warm with really high saturated reds. And as the last example, something with very, with very clean skin tones, for example. So I hope you get the idea and that you can do lots of stuff with it and you're not uh, restricted to some kind of special look. Um, on the output side, I want to talk about two, uh, two things. Um, for example, the trim pass is necessary um, for the feature film projects. So the usual way to do this is you do your main delivery, let's say, for example, a DCI-P3 master of your film that goes to the DCP. And then after it, you do a trim pass for the video rec 8086 distribution. And when you use the ACES system, there are already pre-built pre um, conversions going from ACES first to DCI and um, after it then to the um, video standard. and from my experience, those trim passes are very minimal. I still recommend you to uh, check your output color space uh, and on full length, but I can promise you it will be uh, probably less work than previously for the adjusting. And the most important thing I think on the output side is that ACES is an HDR and white gamut color space, as mentioned before. So if you're having a show, uh, working on a show today and you're rendering out an ACES master, if you want to remaster it, for example, to HDR or something in one or two years, it, you don't have to start at the beginning because the full dynamic range of the camera is still inside the master. You have the full gamut, nothing is lost. You're not limited to the, dis the display you used for the color grading. So probably you will also have to do a trim pass and maybe it will be a little bit more work for this trim pass because you're dealing with a yeah, very different display, but it, you don't have to start from the beginning to do the whole film again. So, to sum things up, um, yeah, ACES, uh, like mentioned before, is an open uh, system and it gives you a consistent color pipeline if you use it from the set to the dailies to VFX and to the final post-production, the DI. And it helps um, solving all the technical challenges I have as a colorist and I can focus more on the creative part, which is nice for me to focus my energy on this and not on solving uh, technical things. It's versatile and flexible from the, uh, on the look side and output, and of course, it's future ready. So, thanks a lot for your attention. Mm -hmm.